Hi everyone, LazyFire here. Welcome back to Battlefield 4. Today we're on Operation Locker and we're going to be visiting with an old friend, the PKP Pechneg, or PK Chang as I like to call it. This is my most used gun in the game, and for good reason. I usually use the flash hider on it, but today we're going to be switching out for a suppressor. Doesn't matter which one, they're all functionally identical, so go crazy with whatever one takes your fancy. Now, I usually don't use suppressors on LMGs, or at least I didn't. I, one day I decided that I was going to try out an RPK-12 with a suppressor after I unlocked it, and I found it was really to my liking, and that's now what I generally use when I play a support class. But that also led to me trying out other support weapons like the PKP and the AWS with silencers, and I found that I really, really like the PKP with the silencer. I don't know why. There's just something about it. It feels like this thing and other LMGs accept silencers a bit more readily than other weapons. There's probably a good reason for that that we can dive into in a bit. But let's talk a bit about the flash hider first. That guy could have used one. Also, this guy. The flash hider does exactly what it says on the box and nothing more, nothing less. It hides the flash of your gun, makes it a little bit harder to see it on both their end and your end, which is to say, when you fire, you don't see the flash from your gun, and when they fire, they don't see the flash from your gun. Very helpful if you're trying to stay a little bit hidden or shoot from a window or a rooftop or something like that, and you don't care if they can see the carrot from when you fire uh, on the minimap, but you worry that they might track your flash down to exactly where you're standing or something like that. It's really an inoffensive little attachment. It only has benefits to it. Every other barrel attachment, the suppressor, the muzzle brake, the compensator, all those things, they all have negatives to them. However, and this is kind of important, the flash hider has no negative effect. It just hides the flash. That is exactly all it does. It's really great at doing it too. It means that you can put this thing on there guilt-free, not have to worry about how your other stats are affected. It's really great for that reason alone. But let's listen to the silence PKP, shall we? That thing is still pretty beefy, isn't it? I love the silence PKP. It just sounds like murder still. It's great. So, yes, the flash hider really only has the one function, and it does it well, and there's no reason not to use it if you don't feel like you're smitten, so to speak, with any of the other... Oh, watch these two guys who come out here. One, and then two. It's painful to watch. So unless you're really taken with a compensator or something like that, there's no good reason not to use the flash hider. And this is a dumb death on my part. So I, I will go ahead and advocate for usage of the flash hider if you don't want a suppressor or other barrel attachment on your gun. Uh, not too many people use it, you'll see a couple of them in this video, but honestly, it feels like it's one of the least used uh, gun attachments in the entire game. It does come in battle packs, so you do have to spend some time with your weapon, but nothing four or five games wouldn't really cover, so I'm kind of confused as to why they're not more common. Anyways, let's talk a bit about the suppressor. The suppressor is, of course, a modern shooter suppressor, so it does three very vital things. One, it hides the flash, so it's already a flash hider too. Two, it makes your gun silent, or, well, quieter at the very least. So that means that the enemy is not going to be able to identify exactly where you are as easily. It means that you can flank people and you can get behind them and fire on people. They might not be able to really deal with you once you get around them or to their side. As a matter of fact, watch what happens up here. Take a quick look around. I notice there's a guy here. I probably could have gotten all three of the guys who stayed to fight if I hadn't fired on the guy who ran off the cliff. That, by the way, is pretty much exactly what he must have done, because if you go down there where uh, he ran, it looks like he died. But if you go down there, uh, you'll notice that there's a out-of-map area down there. So I don't know really what he was doing. It looks like he just tried to run away and had nowhere to go. See? Anyways, the suppressor not only makes you silent, not only hides your flash, but it also keeps you off the minimap when you fire. And this is kind of important because with an unsilenced weapon, you'll appear on the minimap for a second as you know your average red triangle or orange triangle for the enemy team. Yep, another decent flank, but I mean that guy probably deserves most of the credit. Here we are again trying another one of these. But not appearing on that minimap because you fired the gun is a huge thing. I mean, yes, there's spotting on this game that will 3D spot you and minimap spot you. 
Uh, but at the same time, I mean, hey, if you can stay off that minimap for a few seconds, that might be all the time your team needs to spawn on you or get people over to your area or help you out or whatever it is. So uh, being able to fire on people and stay off the minimap is a huge thing. 9 and 5. Remember that, by the way. Remember that score. It doesn't look great right now, but I promise you it gets better. Anyways, yeah, there you go, 10 and 5. 2 to 1 KDR, bro. There are negative effects to your suppressors. This is a video game after all, so there's a negative effect to your suppressor that's very uh, normalized at this point. I would say that I haven't played a game recently that didn't use a range penalty as part of using a suppressor. So what I mean by range penalty is this. Say you're playing Call of Duty and you have a scar or something like that, right? And at 10 paces or less, it will kill people in three shots. And anything beyond 10 paces, 11 paces, or even 10.1 paces and beyond, or 10.01 paces, let's say, let's go even lower, and beyond, it will take people four bullets to die. Let's say that's just a hypothetical situation with hypothetical numbers here. If you put a silencer on, that three hit kill range goes down to seven paces or less, and everything beyond that is four, pa is four bullets. So that's how they handle range uh, decrease in Call of Duty. Now there's actually two negative effects to silencers in Battlefield 4. One is your range is decreased, and that doesn't mean that your damage lessens over distance any faster. It means that your bullets drop faster, so your gun can shoot a much smaller range. It's actually a very interesting way to handle it. Two, and this is actually probably more important, your bullets lose bullet velocity. And it means that you're firing at a little bit slower speed because you're using subsonic rounds. And that's going to just make it a little bit more difficult to hit distant shots. It's going to make it harder to, you know, lead your targets correctly because you have to kind of adjust to it. But on a map like Locker, it doesn't really matter. You can just spray down the hallway. So you have to balance out your benefits. And I think part of the reason why I like LMGs with silencers on them versus other classes or other weapon classes with silencers is because the silencer on every other gun, including LMGs, every gun, decreases range by half. That's pretty bad. I mean, if you look at the starter uh, assault rifle, you start out with 26 range, and if you put a silencer on, it goes down to 13. That's pretty crazy. That can, that's a lot of distance you lose. However, because it's much a smaller number, it matters. The PKP starts out with 42 range and goes down to 21. So the PKP goes from having super long range to having the range that you get from your starter, a little below the range you get from your starter assault rifle. Not a bad situation. That's actually pretty good. And I think that's why I can use the silencers on LMGs a little bit better. They have better range to start with of the automatic weapons, I think they have the best range. So when I put a, a silencer on one of these things, it just means that I'm able to hit things at, well, about the range that you'd be able to hit something with a carbine uh, from normally. Not bad. And right there, that team got absolutely crushed. Somebody on our team shut that door on them. And, well, you saw my score. That was pretty good. But. Now they're in this little slaughter cube. They're, there's nowhere else for them to go besides outside or down there right now. And they're kind of stuck. This is a no-explosive server after all, which means that these guys will not be able to use some grenades, well-timed or not, to get them out of a jam. They're going to have to just throw bodies at everybody and hope they run out of ammo eventually. So that's not really a great plan, so they're just throwing themselves at any weak point they can think they can find. And uh, I can't really blame them. I'd want to get out of that situation as well. So yeah, that's the basic idea behind silencers. It feels like with LMGs, they're much more potent, or they're, at least they're able to accept it better. When you think about it, though, I mean, that's kind of the idea here. LMGs all have different attributes, or the gun classes all have different attributes, where, you know, by nature, you know, stability is higher on this class of gun, or... You know, just by virtue of it being an assault rifle, it has better this. You know, and then you can put a muzzle brake on and take away from the thing that the gun's really good at and add to something maybe the gun's not as good at. 
so you sacrifice one area for the other. In terms of sacrifice, I think the LMGs can make the sacrifice to the to the range gods, basically, to get all the benefits of a silencer. That's that's something I think uh, most people would be willing to admit to or take advantage of, is dropping a little bit of range for a lot of flanking ability, silence, and you know just overall deadliness because being able to see where somebody is on a map is absolutely vital to this game. Uh, so a couple words about this server. I feel like I've gotten a little far into this to not explain it. This is a no explosives allowed server and even the flares that you've seen, the smoke grenades and uh, the flashbangs and everything like that, those aren't even supposed to be on here. They're, you have admins and people in the chat saying, hey this person's using this you know, take a point off their score or whatever it is. Uh, that is a major concern. I didn't know how far this group of unallowed things extended until I jumped into an EOD bot, was driving it around and got about 20 kills and basically forced the enemy back into their spawn from the center because of the EOD bot. Uh, that was actually a lot of fun. They don't expect to see the EOD bot coming up and they don't pay any mind to it until it's, you know, killed like four or five people in a row. Uh, but I, I was told basically that if I got one more kill with the EOD bot, I would be banned from the server uh, because I'd been abusing it, which I thought was kind of funny because, I mean, I did okay with it. For how long I was using it, it was okay. You can get a lot more kills a lot faster on Locker with an EOD bot than 20 in 10 minutes. So, that in mind, this is not a fun server, and I don't think I'll ever come back. You know, one of the things about Operation Locker and the way it's set up is that it's basically a straight line, and if you don't follow one of the three straight lines that you have to certain areas, then you're, well, you're running into a wall. I mean, there's nowhere for you to go, and if somebody happens to put enough people up on one of the choke points that are numerous throughout the level, then you're kind of stuck. There's nowhere you can really go. You have to run into a meat grinder, which is, uh, how things like Operation Metro and Battlefield 3 got the nickname Operation Meat Grinder because well, basically this is exactly what happened. One team has some sort of advantage and just because of the shitty design of the map is able to push people back and back and back and back and just make it a complete slaughter on for one side. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. I'm not a huge fan of that sort of thing happening in games. I've been on both sides of this. You know, I've pushed an enemy back all the way into their spawn, and I've been pushed back all the way into my spawn without being able to do anything. To the point where the enemy team was running into the uncapped zone to shoot at us in our spawn because we couldn't get far enough out of it for them to get kills. You know, that's embarrassing enough. Uh, but, hey, you know, you have to take the good with the bad, and unfortunately Operation Locker is a lot of bad with the occasional bit of good. Operation Locker is fantastic if you want to do a bunch of weapon upgrades, for example. If you're trying to grind out things for your weapons or headshots or anything like that, Operation Locker is your place to go. You'll just run into so many people that it's just inevitable that you'll level stuff up. So, I don't feel too bad about using it, but at the same time, you know, I still feel dirty for playing Operation Locker. <laughs> Not doing bad. I'm gonna get to 40 kills total in this game. Uh, you can see things slow down a little bit after those guys got caught in the uh, in that little area in the cell there at the bottom of the staircase. And since then, I've just been kind of picking up kills here and there. The PKP is really great for that sort of thing. It's you know one of those guns that's meant for sustained fire and all this stuff and holding people down, but its accuracy leaves something to be desired even on its best days. Uh, it's you gotta fire it in short controlled bursts and you can hit basically anyone with that in that case but if you try to unload like I do in a lot of cases on this map because I'm just still used to using the RPK-12 which allows you to just basically mag dump at people and get hits uh, here you see me kinda tap firing a couple shots at a time there uh, and getting a few more hits than I normally would yeah, if you don't tap fire this thing, you are going to have a bad time. You're going to have a hard time hitting things. You're going to have a hard time killing stuff. If you unload like I just did there, you might get a kill or two. I mean, that was luck. That was not anything else. The bullet spread on this thing is pretty wide. 
this the PKP has one of the worst hip fire ratings I've seen on any automatic weapon in this game. It's 10. It is 10. That is crazy high. Or crazy low, I should say. It's a large amount of spread, but it's a very uh, low number. And you can see how that affects it. Look at where my where my uh, crosshairs are when I let go of the ADS button. They're pretty far apart. That means I'm not going to be doing a lot of uh, hip firing unless I'm right on top of somebody. Uh, because it's just not worth anyone's time. I'm just going to die. So you have to be a little careful with the BKP and just know what situation you're in and be able to flank people and move around them, especially if you have a silenced gun. You know, if you're able to kind of get around some people and shoot them in the back or in the sides or something like that, that's really good news for you and your team because you're going to be not only invisible, but they're going to have a hard time figuring out where you are when you're firing on them. So you might actually kill a group of people and then still have the advantage on the next group of people because, well, people don't communicate in this game. So you'll see situations, and you've probably seen it in this video, where I'll like start firing on one group of people and be able to go to the next one pretty quickly without too much effort. Also, I do stupid shit like that, which only racks up deaths on my part. Sprinting through an area where I know there's at least three of these guys to shoot one guy in the head, not really worth anyone's time, but I get extremely bored of this map for, you know, well, the exact reasons you'd think. It's a small, linear map. And because of that, I tend to take stupid risks or go do stupid shit like I've been doing in the last couple runs. So, just, you know, be aware of that fact. You know, I, I'm probably not the person you want to emulate when you think about... Ooh, I forgot how close that was. When you think about playing with an LMG, I'm probably not the person you want to emulate, because I play more Rambo style than I play, uh, play conservative or, you know, play back. Like, some of these guys are sitting back as far as they can and firing into smoke right here and hoping to get a couple hits. Uh, I'm going to take those risks. I'm going to run up here and figure that I've got 100 bullets in my magazine. I may as well spray them all downfield in hopes that I hit something enough to make it dead. Not the, uh... Not the most efficient strategy in a lot of cases, but it works for me and I feel pretty good. I don't like to be the guy who's like on the edge of the map, just getting a kill every now and again. I want to be the guy who's right up front, helping the team out, pushing them forward, you know, leading the charge, so to speak. So it's pretty important to uh, have a gun that can kind of handle that, and the PKP with the silencer, great for it. It's really good for it. I don't know why I ran backwards here, but I did. There's some stupid shit I apparently engaged in towards the end of this video. <laughs> I think I was trying to get outside, but I, I just had one of those moments where I'm watching this, and I've seen this about five times now, and I didn't remember why I did this. But being able to attack these guys outside with this thing, I have the magnifier on, of course. I don't know when I'd really need it on this map. The magnifier isn't really necessary, but it's great for seeing where long-distance shots are hitting. If you can't really tell where it is just from the red dot sight, having that magnifier in there can be a major. That guy was thinking. He must have killed at least three of our guys, though. And oh, I almost got another one. Once again, that guy probably would not have run up that hill if he thought I was still there. But because I have the silencer, I got away with a little. God, I love that little corner right there. Just barely squeeze out a kill. And that should just be about it for this video, though. Look at the score. Of course, this guy got me when I was reloading. I think that's completely ungentlemanly. Uh, but yeah, you can see the score here is pretty lopsided. That's kind of what happens on these... Oof, yeah, I, I deserve that death. These Operation Locker No Explosive Servers, or even Operation Locker in general, it just becomes one of these things. But that's it. Look at that. 726-0 total score. But I end up with 40 kills in this round. I feel pretty good about this. So, thanks for watching, everyone. I'll uh, see you next time, uh, whatever I end up doing there. Bye.